So, good afternoon. I guess it's always a pleasure to have the last talk before lunch. I'll try to be quick. As I said before, I'll speak in English because I think I don't speak very well Spanish and that maybe you'll understand me better if I speak in English. So, uh, I'm the executive, executive director of MIT Portugal program. There's a partnership between the MIT and the universities in Portugal and the industry. It is funded by our national agency uh, funding body, that is uh, Fundação para Ciência e Tecnologia, FCT. And uh, we work uh, in, developing, in developing graduate programs and research and engineering systems. But I guess I'm here also to, because I'm the vice president and one of the founders of PT, that's the Portuguese National Association for Science Communication. I think you can say that we started the other way around. We start with uh, doing, with a workshop in 2011, and then uh, two years uh, afterwards, we uh, did our first conference in 2013. Uh, we're going to have the fourth, fourth, fourth conference in just a month from now in Lisbon, May 26 and 27. So if you want to join us, please do. Um, and uh, I guess, uh, and we are an association, like a formal association, uh, with one year old. So we're still very young as an association of uh, professionals and people that do science communication in Portugal, but our community is really growing and we felt the necessity to have the conference, to share knowledge, to, sh to know what, to, what uh, we were doing and uh, to meet uh, colleagues that I think is the basic that is happening here as well. So I guess the interesting thing is, like, after the first workshop in 2011, we had a closed group, we formed a closed group in Facebook, that is the Portuguese, Portuguese Network of Science and Technology Communication. Actually, we have uh, 1,191 members. I cannot say that all of these people are professional sci science communicators, because it's very difficult to assess what, kind, what is a science communicator and uh, uh, the, percent the percentage of time that you dedicate to the science communication. But it's a close group and it's been very helpful in sharing uh, good practices and sharing uh, useful information, either uh, events of science communication, papers, uh, uh, jobs, uh, workshops, and uh, even new platforms that uh, work that the colleagues are developing. And soon uh, after this uh, group was formed, uh, there was another group, uh, a Facebook group, also closed. Uh, there is Science in Portugal. Actually, it has now over 6,000 members. And um, the objective of the group is different because here you know, we are aiming to a uh, bunch of people that are interested in science in Portugal. So the context that we share there, uh, everyone can publish what they want. There's a moderator, of course, uh, but uh, it's the, it's you can find here also the events. You can find news articles. Uh, you can find pay the the oops uh, pages in uh, of science communication events uh, and and so on. But uh, these two examples of uh, groups and just uh, examples of how uh, science communicators are using. Uh, social media to interact and to promote uh, their own uh, things and also to do some outreach. So, uh, and this is because there's an increasing number of users either in Twitter and Facebook. I don't know if this is a pound. Ah. So this, uh, I just put here the top pages in science and education in Portugal. Um, before I was at MIT Portugal program, I was working at uh, Instituto Gulbenkian de Ciência, that is uh, IGC, and I found the page of uh, Facebook page and Twitter account of this institution, and that f at the time, that was I think 2009, it was the first institution to have a representation in Portugal uh, on the social networks. Uh, nowadays, it's quite... Um, uh, is, is, uh, almost every scientific institution or university has a presence on social, n on social media, so it's nothing new um, regarding this fact. Uh, nevertheless, I would like to share with you some good examples of what's going on. Um, one of them is uh, concept. 
There is the, the, com the Portuguese community of, um, I don't say this in English, sect sectical community, I, maybe you understand what I mean. And they have been very committed in promoting uh, information re regarding current and uh, uh, current scientific knowledge and in um, uh, fighting the pseudoscience uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Portugal. They also have a very interesting initiative that I love, that is the Flying Unicorn the Award, that, as they say, is a happy award for unhappy performances, where it's like the Razzies to the Oscars, if you want to <laughs> a comparison. And it's really interesting that every year they have a list of the most absurd stories and people can vote and then the most voted has the pink flying unicorn. Um, another good example of, uh, of the use of social networks by institutions is the one by the Champalimau Foundation. Just recently they had a new initiative where they interview people from the, the institution and this can vary, I mean it can be the director of a unit, it can be a PhD student, it's a very broad range of people and um, the, the, the audience can submit the questions through their Facebook pages and then they do a video where the people answer the, the questions that were promoted through the social networks and it's, really, it's been really a very successful initiative. Uh, besides these good examples, um, most, uh, some institutions are on social networks, like and I think this is not the case of Portugal, I think it's everywhere. Some peop sometimes people are, have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, LinkedIn account, a Google Plus, and I don't know, many other social networks, and, but they don't tailor the content, content to the medium, and that's not, uh, as you all know here, it's not the very best way to, to communicate and to use the platforms. Uh, fortunately, they are good examples, and uh, that, uh, that, that, that dedicated people that do this and tailor the content to the platforms. I guess um, sometimes this doesn't happen because it's difficult for an institution to have s the, a person that is 100% dedicated to do this and can have the time to tailor uh, the content and adapt the content to the different platforms. Uh, I cannot. Sp I also would like to speak uh, about uh, another way of uh, use of s a good way of using science, online science tools for communicate that is being do, do that being going on f with um, citizen science projects that uh, have been using social media not just to engage participants in in uh, the citizen science projects, but they also use a diverse array of tools to to do science communication. One example is the Grip, uh, GripNet uh, project. This is a project of citizen science that's been running for almost 10 years. Now it's a very, it's uh, as, as long longev longevity. And this is a case of how they use different platforms to uh, accomplish their objectives. They have a website, they have a Facebook page, that again, they tailor the content according to the platform they are using. They had outreach projects directed to schools, and uh, they also have, uh, of course, a, a Twitter account. So integrate all of this into a scientific project of sci uh, citizen science. Um, there, they were also one of the first to use Twitter in a pro in science project in Portugal, and um, it's been running, I guess, since 2008 or so. It's been a very successful project in that sense. Uh, of course, Twitter has a big. Um, it's, I think the users in Portugal, the number of users in Portugal of Twitter is still growing, and um, but of course you can find uh, 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 science journalists in uh, in Twitter. Of course, uh, Vera Novais is one of the. Um, Vera Novais is a researcher. She was a researcher. She did a master in science communication in Portugal, and then uh, as soon afterwards she is working. With uh, for an online journalist, uh, online science journal that is Observador, and she's a, a great uh, nowadays. She's a great science journalist, uh, and Antonio Granado has a really good start, a really long path in science com in science communication and online uh, use in Portugal. So you can find, of course, like everywhere, uh, the journalists. You can find the institutions, 
and you can find the science communicators. Uh, one successful thing that has been going on in Portugal in Twitter is the use of the tag, oh, this is really small, but uh, the use of the tag CNCPT that kind of aggregates the information, uh, scientific information in Portugal and uh, it's a good way to keep things, to know what's going on in, in science in, uh, in Twitter. And I guess one, uh, one of the things that um, can just uh, tell you how relevant Twitter has becoming in Portugal for science communication is just very, 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 very recently, ah! oh. mm -mm. very recently, our, uh, mm -mm. let's see if I can do that, uh, our Minister of Science and Technology just opened its own account uh, on Twitter and you can find him on Ciencia underscore PT. So, um, yeah, as you can see, it's still very, very new. It has a reduced, still a reduced number of, of followers. Um, but I could not speak about science online without speaking about blogs. They've been going on for ages, and these numbers are still for 2013, uh, 2014, but I think they are still relevant, and they still show uh, the importance of science communication in blogs. Uh, in Portugal, I don't know why, but uh, the, um, the blogs that have more uh, that have more successful in Portugal are the ones related to astronomy. AstroPT has been going on for nine years. The blog works very, very, very well. Um, the Rerum Natura is funny because it's, it, it was founded by a diverse group of scientists. It, they were math mathematicians, physics. Uh, people from sociology, biochemistries, and uh, multidisciplinary people of science, uh, sci uh, scientists found the, um, the De Herum Natura. Uh, now he has a big number of collaborators, so we have a lot of articles going on, and it's very active. And he's also been very active, also, for instance, in the policy of science. Uh, last year, or a year, a year ago, more or less, we had a big debate in Portugal about funding, the funded, uh, funding of um, science units and its, uh, their evaluation. And the articles that were published in this blog just got the, the attention of international media that quoted the information on, on the blog. So they are very active also in uh, the, in the policy of, in science policy. And uh, also I would like to, to share with you Viver Associação Viver Ciência blog. It's a, a blog of Association of Science Communication and they cover several aspects of, uh, of science. They have very unique and interesting things about uh, poetry and music and science and of course all the rest uh, that you can expect in a science blog, uh, events, communications, new findings. It's a very interesting blog as well. And just finally, um, maybe I'm running too fast. I don't know what time has passed, but just uh, I could I would like to also to share with you some examples of science uh, communication through video and image. This is an area that is still not very well explored in Portugal. I think there are some good examples of things that have been going on, and uh, yeah, IGC is I think is one of the good examples how they been using this uh, you, these tools for science communication. They've just been making a series of uh, animation short films where they share information about key uh, science uh, notions, like uh, these ones about were about evolution, but there's some about genetics as well, and um, they've been w doing the script, uh, working with animators to do, the, to do the films, so they've been very um, involved in, uh, in, in developing this kind of content. And uh, an, uh, another example now in Instagram is our National History Museum. They have a huge collection of drawings and uh, they, this kind of a citizen science project where they post, um, they post the, the, the drawings of the, of the pic of the, um, of that they have uh, and then they ask people to identify the, um, the, sp the specimen that is rep represented in the, in the picture. So it's, it's one of the few examples, I don't know 
to my knowledge, there are not a lot of examples on Instagram of the, uh, of the Instagram used for uh, science communication. So I hope to give you that I gave you some examples of good, uh, some good examples of uh, how Portuguese are using social media to do science communication. There's still a lot to be done, and uh, but we are betting in this. Uh, we are working on it, and uh, I hope we'll, that the, uh, there's still space for new projects to be developed. And so let's see what the future brings. And so thank you for your time. Uh, you can always find me here on uh, by email, Twitter, wherever. Just if you want to know more about Psycom PT or if you want to know more about projects being developed in Portugal, if you are interested in uh, a specific field and you want to find a partner in Portugal that works, uh, can collaborate with you in uh, a specific field, just write me an email and I'll do my best to, to keep to, to to give you an answer, okay? So thank you. Bueno, y ahora si tenéis alguna pregunta. Claro. Valientes, ¿qué pregunta en inglés? Hey, if you Find me we, we, when I have a beer in my hand, and I'll be happy to answer it anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had a curiosity because I used the Rerum Natura as a source when I had to cover the yeah. issue around, uh, I mean, budget cuts in Portugal. I, yeah. I was wondering how it is perceived within Portugal, whether it is perceived as an authoritative source, um, a very um, controversial one. I mean, the blog and the scientists that write on it, I think or, or they are perceived like, you know, reference? In general, I think it's a very respectful respectful blog. I think people respect what is written there, it's taken in account. And it's taken in account, I think, by the community of uh, science scientists, uh, but also by, um, by the government. I think uh, it, it has brought some aspects to um, give Give some, give, gave a spot to some controversial aspects that were running within the community, but there was not a way from the community to express their worries. So the blog is one, one way to make the vi visible the concerns of the community. Alguna otra pregunta? And now there will be a Portuguese asking a Portuguese in, 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 in English. <laughs> um, can you talk a bit, a little bit about um, uh, science communication financing in Portugal? Yes, <laughs> I can talk about the need of investment in science communication in Portugal. <laughs> but I guess that's everywhere. Uh, so I can say that um, when I left Portugal in 2002 and then I came again in 2008 and between these six years there was a lot of developments in, uh, in science communication in Portugal. Nowadays you can find science communicators working in universities, you can find them at uh, research units, you can find them at research institutions. The funding to develop projects is very hard to, 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 to have, either because institutions don't have the financial means to bet in developing these projects and financial means to hire people that can work in science communication. So um, it's, still, it's, still, it's still very difficult. We, 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 have, um, uh, we have scholarships in PhDs in, uh, po and postdocs for works in science communication. Uh, you, you have people that are hired by the universities, but I mean, it's still still very difficult to find the money than to have the projects, so um, to execute the projects. I don't know if you have a different view on on it on it being from outside. Um, there is. 
I have I have a, a different view, but one thing that uh, I would like to acknowledge, even though there is difficult to get uh, financing in Portugal for science communication, there is something that in Spain it doesn't exist, which is the fellowships uh, of postdoc postdoctoral yeah. uh, researchers for science communication, yeah. and even though in Portugal I know that that they are not contracts, they are fellowships, but still I believe that that's something needed for the, the, um, the, Spanish, uh, the Spanish Ministry of Science is to acknowledge fellowships for science communicators. I think that's really important because sometimes, you know, you, you do the projects and you are practitioners. I'm a practitioner, I, I'm at, at my heart, but uh, is there is a need to, to do a serious study and evaluate what are, what are you are we doing? I mean, uh, is is what we are doing effective in science communication? What's the best way to to communicate? And I think these fellowships are essential to do to do, to 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 address these issues. Um, science communication as a science is is, is still is, is very important. Bueno, si se, se os ocurre alguna Otra pregunta para Silvia. No, pues ahora eh, muchas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you.